Hey, welcome back, y'all. Jason and Michelle here, Echo Nesters. We're with Bad Betty today. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and as you can see, Bad Betty is in the Christmas spirit. Today, Santa Claus delivered Bad Betty a gift. We're gonna crack that open and see what we got. I've got a sneaky suspicion I know what it is. Bad Betty, plug your ears. Seat covers. Well, Bad Betty, we're gonna see what it is. I'm gonna take a moment and move these gifts that we've got going here that Michelle so beautifully wrapped. Stick with me. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and crack this box open and see what we got going here. For those that uh, clicked on this, you know that what Bad Betty got is a gift. And uh, holy macro, they don't play with the tape here. We're not gonna chip too much time on you folks showing the unboxing, if you will. That's something for some other folks to do. But let's see what we got in this box here. I'm all about shaking that stuff right out of there. Okay, Bad Betty got some seat covers. And we're going to talk about why, what that means. Um, got some nice set of instructions here. The brand is Lingvito, and I may have mispronounced that, but we picked them up off of Amazon. $109 for the front pair. The nice thing about these is they are... Uh, my mind just went blank and that's totally fine. Sometimes it just happens, but, uh, airbag, seat airbag compatible. I'm going to explain all that and show that to you in a moment too. Uh, they do come with a headrest. They are a faux leather material. What I like about them is they're hundred percent waterproof. So those of you that are familiar with, uh, your echo and your adventures and stuff, sometimes you're in the sand, you're out and about, you're camping, something uh you come in and out of the van you're wet you've been swimming etc and as you know i have michelle direct you up here to these front seats uh ford did a really good job on their twill patterns uh, i think that the material they use is is decent quality my experience has been over time uh where you get in and out of the vehicle and i'm going to kind of show this to you really quickly here and then we'll cover it more is what you're going to find the wear points to be is right in these areas and that's from the continuous in and out so not only are we looking at a set of seat covers to keep bad betty seats in good condition but also to kind of uh let's say align itself with our lifestyle we do a lot of adventuring we're in and out of the vehicle a lot oftentimes we're in and out of snow and water etc and i want to keep them clean i want to keep them in good shape so let's get started here stick with me we're on the way all right, so what I think is pretty cool is they've actually got very detailed instructions here. It's step by step. But if you look up here, they actually say that they have a web, uh, let's call it a video, that you can uh, connect with on the web page you purchase these from. And in this case, we purchased them from Amazon. What I also like is that they have some contact information down here, and they're inviting you to contact customer service if you have any questions about the installation. So just to disclose here, we're not affiliated with this company, no sponsorship. Uh, we paid 100% full price at $109 from Amazon for these. So uh, we don't, we are not biased by any means. We just happen to like the way they looked online. And so let's go ahead and pop this open here for a moment. What do we got going on here? So it looks like we've got a typical backrest area. And then we've got the seat area. And what I think I'm already loving about this right here is that the seated area here where I was telling you the wear point was on the seat, which let's just take it around real quick. These areas here are a little bit raised. This company actually kind of mimicked that concept, but again, 100% waterproof, a faux leather, padded. Um, taking a look at the top here, it looks like when this is gonna fit over the seat cover, that that's the area that's gonna be open and that's what you want for your side impact airbags on your seat. Um, I should say the side seat airbags that deploy in the event that uh, something happens that we, we all never want to have happen. The other thing that these came with, and I think this is, you know, this is good quality too, is an actual headrest with the cushion of the back area. So we'll play with that. Um, it looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward. I actually want to pop that on right now. What the heck? Uh, so one of the things that you may notice when you get ready to install these, and I'm kind of jumping ahead, but for good reason, is that when you get ready to feed this through at the lowest point, if you have any obstructions, which I don't think you will, 
you can always raise the headrest. So I'm gonna go ahead and back that off and just kind of explain how that's done. On most seat manufacturers, they have a little button in here. And I don't know if you can see me depress that, but right when you press that in, right here, you can kind of hear it click. It allows you to raise these. You can actually do a full removal of that. So let's just say that you got your headrest cover on. Go ahead and Velcro it up. Whoops, sorry. Velcro it up. Sits real nice. And we typically prefer our headrest in the lower position. And there we go. So I'm going to have Michelle swing around the front here. Let's take a look at that. That's actually very padded too. So far, quality and fill, I'm loving. And I'm pretty critical about things like this. So let's go ahead and take a glance at the instructions and uh, see what our next steps are. Okay, so let's get started here. I'm gonna swing around the front, open some doors, get some room, and Shell's gonna find her way right back here. Be right back. So while we're all on pause and you guys were grabbing something to drink, get your popcorn ready, etc., for the Echo Nester show, um, I was taking a look at the rest of the quality of the seat covers. And so far I have zero to complain about, so we're not gonna elaborate on anything there. But after you unbox these, I've discovered that there is no driver or passenger side. So basically it's universal. You're not gonna have to try to worry about that. But as we were looking through the instructions, um, they're talking about these, uh, these chucks, if you will, these hook chucks and where they attach and how you're going to pull these straps, which are part of the lower seat area. I'm going to flip it around. So let's just assume for a moment that this is where your bottom would sit. Here's your back. And if you were to flip it over just for reference point, these straps right here, which are going to utilize these chucks if you will. Well, I'm going to put them on properly, but just to show you that these would utilize the chucks and be pushed through. So to kind of demonstrate that, we flipped our seat cover upside down. We've got the strap here, not the seat belt style that you see here, and not the hook straps that you're going to see underneath here, but just basically the loops which are closest to the tag. You're going to take the little disc you're gonna insert it. There's no right or wrong way, whether you wanna insert from the left or the right, there is no wrong way. You're just gonna insert it. So it goes right into there. It makes a nice loop catch. You'll see how it catches there. It can't go beyond that. So I think that's a pretty clever design. Now this is where um, I had to take a moment to figure a few things out. So I'm gonna have Michelle swing the camera around here. And this is your, your, your factory seat bottom, if you will. And you're gonna see my hand guide through here and Michelle's gonna be looking for my fingers on the opposite side of the seat. So I'm gonna have her pan the camera around. And as you can see, if I lift up this tab, which is gonna bump in the camera, you probably <laughs> see my fingers. Hey. That area right there is where those chucks, if you will, are going to feed through. So I gotta put on my glasses for a moment. And, uh, and when I'm talking about the little chucks right here, you can see they're called string chuck. And they go in the middle and they kind of demonstrate that. The other thing that I thought was pretty cool is you have the choice to either remove the headrest for installation or not remove it. And I'm going to explain how they, they came up with that. I think it's actually excellent. They have these zippers and what they're going to do, again, we are at, I should flip this back over, seat bottom, seat back. And we're going to demonstrate how we would pull this directly over the headrest and how these zippers here are designed to just close in tight to the uh, headrest bars. So I think that's pretty clever as well. So far, I'm very impressed. So the first thing that I would do, besides obviously reading the instructions, is basically take the seat cover, open the zippers at the top of the headrest completely so you have lots of room. You can also tell that this is your seat back because it has these nice pockets in the rear, which we're gonna talk about later. So I drift that right over. I've already pre-installed this. Like I said, this is actually super easy, in case you missed it in the beginning, because you're getting that little soda drink and popcorn. Pretty straightforward. Headrest does not necessarily have to be up. So I'll put it in the lowest position, just for demonstration. Take the flap. We have the texture or the pattern design to the front. Slip it between the headrest and the back of the seat. Tuck this underneath and naturally Velcros into place. 
And I'm telling you, I would not know that that was faux leather. So we're gonna move to the front here. We've got our bottom. We know that this is our back. We've got our zippers opened up. We discussed that. And we're gonna just basically slide this over the top. And we're gonna take the elastic band. Remember, this, where the armrest is, they're in theory, or in theory, they're supposed to be airbags built into this seat. So, we're gonna slip that over. This goes right over the headrest. We're gonna kinda of guide it down. And as we talked about earlier, I'll have Michelle come around here where these hooks are. We're gonna be tucking those back underneath where you saw my hands. So I'm gonna have Michelle kind of demonstrate right here when we lift up both pieces and I'm putting my hand through. I don't, can you guys see that at all? Where I'm tucking this through yeah. right there. Okay, so that's where it'll come through. I'm gonna reattach this because I accidentally, obviously just disattached it. And here we go. So correction on something here, put it through this loop. Okay, there we go. That way I can get my hands through. So I'm going back through the back of the seat, the lower portion where the factory flap is. And there are obviously two of these. I'm going to take the second one. Again, doing exactly the same thing, lifting up and reaching for that chuck tab. And I'll leave it right there for now. Now I've got the front seat cushion area. You'll notice that we have what I'm going to call the uh, underside seat belt. And then earlier we also talked about these little clips. And this is really important when we get to demonstrating where these hook, I think it's key that you pay attention to where you're gonna hook them into the seat. There's a metal band. We're gonna swing the camera around and explain more about that. I'm gonna step outside the vehicle, open the driver's side door, and I'll be right back with you. All right, I am on the driver's side and uh, that's pretty obvious given the steering wheel. And again, we have slipped the back over, right over the headrest. We have our zipper points here made it really simple. I have not closed those up yet. We'll do that at the end. I like it to still be a little bit loose so that we can make some adjustments. We talked earlier about the importance of where these connect versus where they should not. We talked about our little under seat seat belt and uh, how it clicks in and out. Pretty straightforward. So I'm going to draw this down. The nice thing is it fits very well. It's as if these were designed for the Ford. I mean, if you just look at this raised area, and how it cuts in. If you can bring that camera around, I think that people will see that this is almost identical. So we bring this down, good quality fit too. We make sure that our straps on each side, the seatbelt strap as I'm referring to it, and it's not your seatbelt by the way, let's make that clear. I'm just calling it the seatbelt strap. It is there, this is tucked in. We're gonna make the connection under there later, but I'm gonna show you how we do not want these front straps. So as Michelle brings the camera around here, this little lever arm most seats have allow you to move the seat back and forth by just raising it. Now, if you can imagine if I was to put this in front of here and it was to get caught up, it's going to restrict this arm and the seat from moving. So the incorrect way is to the front of the adjustment arm. So I'm gonna loosen that so we can do it the correct way. The correct way is to simply go underneath the adjustment arm and click underneath here. There's a little, let's call it a little cutout, if you will. And we'll take the second strap, make sure it's straight. Hook is in the downward position. It clicks underneath there. We have full range of movement on the seat. So that part's done. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna come back in and we're gonna make the rest of the connection. Stick with me. So swing the camera in here. So there's a couple choices you have. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ride out with my first choice and then I'll let you guys decide your own. So remember our seat belt style strap that we we're talking about that comes around. As you're coming around the back of your Ford seat, this is where you adjust the back. It can either tuck underneath the lip here. I don't know if you can see that, it kind of makes a little hook. Then you got your dial or you can come up over the top and just make sure that you don't get tangled up in your um, back adjustment. Now, the reason that I don't like this position is that one, it leaves this a little loose and sloppy. That's number one. Two, if this is in between here over time, I think it's gonna wear into the fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck it underneath. It's nice and clean. 
and I'm gonna let it sit like that because it just kind of guides around real naturally. It also has no effect on moving the seat, as you can see. So you can experiment the way that you choose to. I think that's the way we're gonna go. Um, again, just to recap, and I think this is important, our front connectors right here, where it's gonna hook in, I just disconnected one, goes underneath the seat adjustment arm just like so and remember that's important so that you can still make full adjustment without restriction so let's hop over to the passenger side it's going to be the exact same thing exact same walkthrough we'll make this one a little faster but hey why not do them both be right with you all right we forgot one thing before we move to the passenger side remember i told you that you can slip this right over they have these zippers so you can tighten up close so raise the headrest, enough room. Grab one of the zip zippers, come in as tight as you wish. Come over here to the other side, get your zipper engaged. And you pull them in, um, just again, just to where you feel comfortable, where it's aesthetically pleasing. There is no right or wrong to this. It's really about aesthetics. Just make sure that you have a little room in here so that you can push your button in on each side and drop your headrest. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push the buttons in, I'm gonna drop my headrest, and then I'm gonna draw my zippers in. I don't mind the fact that those zippers are there and they're seen, but I think what's really cool is check this out. We're nice and taunt down here. We've got some pockets. We've got our straps underneath the factory piece here. We have other strap underneath the lumbar support. I think it's a good fit. You might even experiment where maybe you run a few things different, but I think that this is the answer. So we're gonna take off over here to the passenger side. Let's get her going. So here we are back again. You should already be familiar with where the back is. It's the longest part, the seat cushion and your headrest. And obviously what direction the headrest should face towards the front of the vehicle where the pleats are. So we'll pop that on again, knowing that the tongue slips through here you can just pull that right over the top, take the tongue, stick it underneath what we're going to call the lip there. It's done. It's secure. It's fit. Armrest is in the upper position. We now know that we will be placing the backrest this direction. And we're going to go ahead and unzip this. Remember, pretty simple. I actually like, too, how they have the dual zipper. And the reason they do that is you could actually bring the throat, if you will, if you wanted to remove the headrest in between each zipper. The reason that I'm not gonna do that is again, aesthetically for now, this doesn't bother me. If it kind of starts to bother me, I'll remove the headrest and we'll do it the other way. You know what, just for kicks, let's do it now. Let's just do each one different because it's simple. Here's how we bring up the headrest. Grab it, pull straight up, release button right here. You can see where my thumb is engaging. Release button here, engaging. Right hand, left hand, push those in. Release them. Headrest comes out. Set it safely aside. Again, maybe just get a view from down here. You can see when I push that in that the hook, the, or I'm sorry, the pin, if you will, the rod that grabs this piece here is able to disengage. So we're gonna just pull this over, just like that. Same way we did it before. This strap again, coming over here, goes to the outside of the armrest, not to the inside, but over, okay? We're gonna go ahead and tuck that in, just like we said. We'll get this down here. We'll move over here to, let's call it the door side, knowing that our lowest strap is going to go on the outside of our seat adjustment. We'll bring the camera around and show you that in a moment. Remember the goal here right now is just to demonstrate your two options. So I've got one zipper here. I've got another zipper here and a zipper here and a zipper here. So with two of the zippers between, let me get those out just for demonstrating, between where you're gonna set your seat in, two here, two to the outside. We can then take our headrest, making sure that the pleats are facing forward of the vehicle. 
slide it in to the original location. Just kind of line it up just like that. Push the button in, the release. After you push the button in, give a little bit of a wiggle, press straight down. And if you bring the camera down here, you'll be able to see that I can close the zipper nice and tight next to the rod, nice and tight next to the rod. Same thing applies here, pretty straightforward, just like that. I'm gonna bring my headrest all the way down. Like I said, that's the position that we prefer. In order to do that, remember I need to, in this case, loosen up one zipper, sorry. Push the button in, release it. Zip it back up nice and tidy and it looks good and that gap is a little bit more seamless. I may actually yeah, do this side this way. I'll do that afterwards because you guys don't need to re-demonstrate re that. But it looks like it has a little collar. Yeah, I think it looks good. Let's go ahead and get Michelle to swing the camera around. I'm going to go to the outside and meet you guys up front. So passenger side is exactly how we did the driver's side. We got our two hooks right here that we're going to disengage. Remember, they're going to come to the front, going to the inside of our seat lever adjuster, not to the outside, so we don't restrict movement. We got what I call our seat seat belt strap. And then here's those two little straps that are going to slide back through. So same thing. Got it like that. Maybe turn it right in, lock it in, done. Just like that, let's take it back out. Um, actually, I should demonstrate something. I'm gonna come in from, yeah, it doesn't matter what side. I was gonna do something a little different, but no need to. Let's get them both engaged here. And we will, there we go. Oops. See, this is real life, people. This is what you're gonna have happen. And so I'm gonna tuck those between the seat. Michelle's going to take the camera and she's going to go to back to the back side of the seat where we're going to see these pop through again. And I apologize, I got one twisted here. Don't mean to waste you guys this time. And uh, bingo. Get that one to come basically through and I'll be able to fill those in a moment. So again, the reason that I'm kind of doing this all on my own, minus my lovely camera operator, is to show you that this is something you can do by yourself. This is the seat cover piece. Here's Ford's factory piece. I'm going to lift it up. I see my little uh, chucks, as they refer to them. One popped off. We already know how to solve that problem. That would be my fault for the way that I turned it. I'll reconnect that. So we'll leave that right there. And I'm gonna grab the other one super fast. Take, stick my hand in there first, just to see if I can fill it, and I do. And I'm gonna grab it. I think how I did the driver's side is my preferred method, um, which is to push these through and then maybe grab the chucks. But again, there's no right or wrong. It's probably by the time you get to the passenger one, whatever you think's gonna be best for you. So remember our little seatbelt guy, he's going to go underneath the seatbelt connector, not over the top, that's sloppy, and it's going to interfere with where we tie our seatbelt in, and we don't want that. So we're gonna kind of come underneath here, and there we go. I'm gonna come back around. I'm gonna leave this just kind of loose here while I grab the other one. And there we go. Again, holding each side, making the buckle connection, if you will. Very simple, you're gonna hear it click. We're now going to lift this back up. I'm gonna lay down here for a moment. We're going to take our strap, if you will, right here, and we're gonna make our connection, whoops. <laughs> We're gonna make our connection just like that so it can't come out. And you'll find too that when you get ready to do this, it, you're gonna figure out which side works best for you where it locks in. Again, 
whatever you do is going to work. The other thing that I did notice that I might experiment with, and I kind of saw this, the Ford factory seat cover where this flap is, kind of like a dust or a, uh, I don't know, a courtesy cover for just aesthetics. It appears to me like if I really wanted to, I could take that and make the connection there. Um, you know what I might do? I think what we'll do is we'll do it just like that for now. We'll see what we think of it and then we'll just report back. So we're just about there. We've got this nice and tight. Things are looking good. We prefer this method. We're gonna drop our flap. We got some nice area here to, I wouldn't probably stick my cell phone in there because why would I, but uh, bingo. I'm gonna step back outside the vehicle. Swing around to the front. Double checking that I like the way that this is fitting around the seat, just like that. Our straps again, baby. Woo! That, that would be our horn. <laughs> our straps, <laughs> if you will. We just want to make sure you guys were awake. Um, again, go between here, not over the top. I cannot stress that enough. Right between, hooks in. Right between, hooks in. You'll know you did it right because this is free. There's no restriction. And there you go, waterproof, faux leather. Oh, actually very comfortable. Nice padded headrest. Okay, so this is not only for all the reasons we want it to be, but I invite you all to get a pair of these. Again, we have no affiliation, we're not commissioned. Nobody paid us to do this. Set your own bottom on, tell your own story. Beautiful thing, it's Amazon. You find that you don't like how we reported on these, you send them on back. Worst thing you did is waste 15 minutes to 30 minutes of your life with an experiment. I love them. Thanks for joining us, Jason and Michelle. We appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed, please do. At some point, that's going to support our channel and maybe uh, get us out there and have some more adventures. Take care.